we go. Hey, listen, uh, man, thank you for coming. Uh, a lot of people don't know how great you are on the water and also off the water. We're going to talk about it. Captain Kyle Williams. What's up? Oh, I thanks, almost missed you. All right. Thanks for being here tonight to uh, share with the folks and stuff. Thanks for you coming back always, my co-host there. Boat running good? Yeah, man. Everything going good. Everything awesome, good. man. Very cool. Um, man, I don't know where to start with you. I know that you're... We've been talking about legends. We've had Fuzzy on. Uh, we had Drew on last week. Uh, all we're talking about is kind of the history of Hilton Head and the fishery and a lot where uh, these captains are coming from here locally. You are a local kid. You were born here. And we should mention, too, that Drew, last week, which you'll see here coming up, he's also born and uh, raised here. What was it like g being born and raised here? And then when did you get into fishing and who kind of got you into it? Was it here? Was it somewhere else? What's kind of your story and your background there? We'll start with that. I was born in Philadelphia. Oh, there you go. Strike one. Philly Eagles. There you yeah. go. It's coming up on you. Yeah. Shortly after, we moved to Japan. Lived in Japan three years, I think. Then we moved up north. Dad rode the train to the city. Realized that was awful. And they moved back down here where they spent their summers in college. Wow. At uh, Dos Barachos. Where's that at? The Big Bamboo. Oh, yeah. The old school yeah, Big Bamboo. Yeah, yeah. So we moved here in 91. And how old are you at that time? Six. Six. So you're still pretty young, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it was awesome. I, like walked around. Like I found a toad like the first day, and I kept it in my pocket like two days. Like everyone I saw I was like, <laughs> like it was sick. I mean, coming from where I was before, it was so awesome. Pretty city dwellings and suburbs, actually, where you were up to your six years old. Then you get here. Is that why? Just the environment itself. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, like up north it was cold. So oh, was just, right, exactly. I was the only child, and when it's cold, you just sit in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Locky kid. Yeah. Like, right. Yeah. So it was just awesome to be here. So I had a good appreciation for it. And then we went fishing. The first day we moved, we went fishing. And I caught, it's probably like one of the only sharks I ever killed. We caught this black tip. No, maybe it was a spinner. It was going nuts. And, uh, brought it back. I think I brought it back. I'm trying to figure out how this went down. This might have been two occasions. There might have been two two moments. Two sharky moments. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think we gutted it in the kitchen. So this is you personally going out and catching one and or on a charter boat? No, this is off the beach at Dolphin Head. We gotcha. moved to Hilton Head Plantation, so we're like bike ride distance from Hilton Head Plant to um, you and Papa Rick. Head. You and Papa yeah. Rick. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah. But I don't even think I could ride a bike. I say bike riding distance. I rode a skateboard on my knee everywhere until like all my friends I made outran me, and I had to eventually learn how to ride a bike. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so that was like my first fish I caught. Really? Up here. I sure. caught fish other like up north. I think I you know bluegills or whatever we did catfish. Did you catch the bug up there with that, though? Or was it just here that it really started ramping up? Fuzzy called it the gene. We all have that gene where we just got fish on the head constantly. We got it. But any fish in the man. Do you think it started there? Or when you really saw the environment here, the shark? I mean, that had to be pretty amazing in itself, right? Started up north in Yankee Town, for really? sure. Really? On Long Island Sound. So my dad's a big windsurfer. Still goes out there and rips it. But he would troll this... Uh, I don't know if it was a number one planer. It was made out of wood at the time, but it was like the size of a number one. Maybe it was a number two, like number two size. Yeah. It was wood, and then it had this like janky leader and this like little black eel tube guy. And he would troll uh, for bluefish off his windsurfer. So I'd be like, Come on, dude, seriously. I was like sitting on the back of the windsurfer, <laughs> and it, the thing would trip. And you had a problem, then no, no, no. You just, you just no, you just sail back to the beach. <laughs> oh and then you pull it in. <laughs> then you pull it in. That's slow. That is so sick. Yeah. Awesome. So that's kind of where I started getting into it. That's like a big surfboard, right? With like a sail? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's too young to remember windsurfing. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's been around a long, long time. Well, now. I'm thinking of like the board with the kite, but I guess that's kite. No, board. this was actually the windsurfer back in the day, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. Precursor to the kite, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Um... So that's where it all started, and then started catching stuff off the beach in um, 
built an implantation. And then I made good buddies with Barnacle Bill's kid, Billy. Really? Uh, and that's, and he was always fishing. And he had like, we'd do some of the good ponds and held that plantation to go. So we'd ride our bikes and ride around and same fish ages, all. Same age as yeah, you? Yeah, same like, grades. Gotcha. There was a, a few of us. And at the time, Billy was really husky. And he, he couldn't really ride a bike. I later taught him to ride a bike and middle school or high school. He's like super fit now, so I can say it on I got it. <laughs> uh, I like, went the opposite way. He's like a physical therapist at MUSC. He's Is all he? fit and everything. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm proud of him. He, uh, But at the time, he rode this tricycle, like the adult tricycle, and he had the basket. And he was like oh. a pack mule guy. He had the buckets and all the gear. <laughs> Sick. That's awesome. We had to go carry our rods, of course, but we were like, come on, Billy! And he's like, carting all his, like, minnows. <laughs> and all that. When did uh, what'd you catch in those ponds that just start? I mean, I know there's big bass, there's some redfish. Like, what just, like, totally got, totally got you hooked? To where you're at today, basically. <sighs> I mean, are you just, all of it. you just always been into it and yeah. fishy kind of guy and looking for it, basically. Yeah, anything outside. Yeah. But... Probably we, I think we bass fish the most, and then we did a bunch of saltwater stuff. We'd go catch sharks and whatever off the Rebo docks, and uh, what else would we catch? We'd catch redfish at Spring Lake and Bear Lake, catch a bunch of bass on the golf course ponds. There used to be this big tree hanging over the driving range pond. You could climb in the tree and like wiggle it so <laughs> some leaves would fall out and then drop a lizard. Not a real one, but like the lizard, right, or the yeah. zoom lizard. Yeah. Oh, it was so sick. The deep. tree fell in the water and then they pulled it. Instead of leaving it in, they pulled it out. And there's still some good ones in that pond. But... Man. So, I mean, boy, there's a correlation to a lot of the people we've been talking to. Drew, too, is like sea pines, starting out when he was a kid, going to these ponds and stuff, and then building on from there. Then you get into high school. You still doing the same thing? Because you're kind of, you're right in that age, too, where I don't think it was super popular to fish, or was it around here at the time? Or did you have your small click of nah, guys, basically? Yeah, it was still pretty small at that time. Yeah. And then getting into a boat then in high school, or no? We did. We fished off the boat a little bit in high school, middle school and high school. We had uh, the Britannia. We went in halfsies with this old aquasport. It was actually a pretty cool aquasport uh, with a neighbor down the street, and it was some British couple, so they had this boat named the Britannia. That's awesome. <laughs> That we kept at the boathouse. So we'd fish off that. We uh, we'd tarpon fish off it a little bit, cobia fish, and run out of gas a bunch. And I mean, you guys had an old Mariner on it, which was like the old school? first motor ever. <laughs> <laughs> I was the eighty something, but so you did a lot of fishing with your dad, and I know your dad real well. Um, your dad's never been a fishing charter boat captain. He's been a mm -hmm. captain, but he does a lot of fishing with you. You guys do a lot of fishing. So did you say that, you know, your dad, Rick, was a big part of it? Or was it more you just exploring out there? Uh, yeah. A little bit of both? Oh, uh, yeah. Probably a little bit of both. But he wasn't super into it. But he would do it just to hang out with me. Or I would do it to hang out with him or whatever. But just getting getting into it early. Is, is what it's is all key. about. Yeah. yeah I got gotcha. you. Yep. So you get through high school. You know, you're fishing, doing the same thing. When do you decide, like, hey, man, I'm thinking about being a charter boat captain? I mean, I know you're probably into the fishing heavy Who's, uh, did anybody influence you as a charter boat captain, or was it just something on your radar, or not? Oh, it happened on accident. Really? Yeah. So I graduate college, uh, where did I go? Florida. <laughs> Somewhere, right? No. Coastal Carolina. Oh, well, I'm close. That's a little bit farther up. <laughs> I graduate Coastal Carolina, and it was like 08, I think. 08 or 09, right when the job market's like. Oh, super bad. squirrely like yeah. GM bailouts and bank bailouts the whole deal and I was like man this is a funny time to try to find a job so I just I was working for live boat with you yeah absolutely and uh, I was like man this is a funny time to go looking for a job I was like, I'm gonna cool it out for the winter and see what happens and then it, it just never went away that never, was it? I never went looking for that job <laughs> you just stayed right there, <laughs> you just stayed right there. there the yeah. whole time that's awesome and then uh well, I'll tell you, the guy who probably influenced me to be, to go out on my own and do it was Byron. He's mm -hmm. like the influencer of all things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Stoker broker. Yeah, <laughs> just a great attitude and a, 
a master tradesman in all of this, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So what did he say to you? Ah, it was something like really small. It was like, oh man, have you seen the such and such? You've been out there? I'm trying to do a, buyer, a fair buyer man, impression. A, good luck. <laughs> it's killer. <laughs> <laughs> so he said something. I was like, wow, that looks way better than what I'm doing. He's driving away in that little boat by himself. And then that's what I did. That's I actually it. bought the same boat that he had. Not yeah. his boat, but I bought the same. Not because he had it, but just because it looks so this cool. This is the Jones one. Brother first one, the 21? Uh, the Hughes Red Fisher. Oh, okay. The old I gotcha, gotcha. And I uh, bought that thing, and I was like, oh, my gosh, yes. But you had the GNU, you had the GNU before that, didn't mm -hmm. you? So, yeah. I mean, that got you really out there. I mean, what did you learn from just being in that boat out there in the marsh and stuff? I mean, that's like, oh, that's you're getting back in where you really want to be. Yeah. You're seeing things that a lot of people don't see, to be honest with you. Yeah. You're a fairly decent sized boat, basically. That thing is awesome. Yes. Dad still has that. Yeah. So I'm super psyched that he has You always got to keep that one. I was going to sell it to buy the Hughes, and I was keeping it in his garage. He's like, oh, man, I'm not going to have anything to use. So I was like, use it whatever you want. And he was using it quite a bit. So he just gave Still was, in the family. He just gave me, it was like four grand or something. And uh, so he just gave me the money, and I was like, Oh, sick. <laughs> Perfect. <It's a> sick <laughs> yeah, and you get to use it still. When you, uh, you know, you and I did work at Live Oak, and I know one thing that you worked your tail off to get to where you're at. It wasn't just given to you. I watched you work, and we all did summers, and then to get that first one. So you went with the Hughes first. What was your mindset? Just one on one. You're a big fly fisherman too. Mm -hmm. uh, tie your own. You do everything really. But in that at that time when you're starting your own business. It, is that what you're thinking about doing? It's just getting yeah one on one clients and and seeing what's out there, basically. Yeah, I did. That was the idea. I did a whole bunch of fly fishing, probably 80, 70, 80 percent fly fishing right off the bat, and uh, that was a tough gig for Hilton Head. Yeah, that's you've got be like a, your small crew of guys on Hilton Head that'll hire you through the winter every once in a while for a tailor tide in the summer, but then the tourists that came down. You know, would have just watched river runs through it and book the trip with their wife and just hooks flying everywhere. And <laughs> at the, you know, I'd have them on. There was a really good red fishery back then. That was like 12 years ago. Yeah, yeah. So there was a lot of fish. Yeah. You remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you just, at one point, you just said, hey, I got I to gotta switch gears here, basically. I did. I got a little sour about how, it. How cool was it? Can I, real quick. How yeah. cool was it? I know it was probably a tough go with the customers and not the customers, but that type of fishing because you really need somebody that's experienced, kind of has that same visual that you have. How many good trips did you have though? Did you get some good clients? Yeah. Like, this, if I could just load the boat and trips and stuff like this would be epic. Yeah, for sure. Or something you would still like to do to be honest, because I think we all would like to have the Hell's Bay hundred twenty thousand dollar and go out there and guide just one person all the time. It's just not gonna. Not around here. No. Not no. around here. I would love it, though. Yeah. I feel like that'd be frustrating. Like, you're doing your job. There they are. Can't do it. And then you look back and you're kissing them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, how many fish? Oh, there would be, like, from us to the camera, there would yeah. be, like, just this wad of redfish just sitting just there. Just drop it. Just you're, like, it. 10 feet. You know, the rod's 9 feet. You're, like, 10 <laughs> feet. Just go like that. <laughs> and then you get back to the dock and they're like, well, you know, sure. At least we, we saw them. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe next year we'll catch something. <laughs> yeah. right. My favorite's though. That's why yeah. we call it fishing and catching. Yeah. Yeah. That's the word. Man, how about that visual? That was pretty sick. <laughs> um, sick fish. So you go in, you say, all right, well, it's time to make a change. Does it happen pretty quick? Like, you know, like, yeah. I, I got to change gears here, basically. I was on year three. Year three, I bought the Jones Brothers. The 21, right? Is yeah, it, that it, was, was uh, it was 20 feet. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Great boat. Yeah, that <laughs> was a good boat. In the Jones, so that thing had, I think I put a trolling motor on it. Yeah. And, and, and a power pole. Yeah. But, and, but it still had the platform. Oh, you didn't put that on? You bought it like that? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, they come, it's called the 1910 light tackle. Did you sell that locally? No. There's one in Sea Pines that looks just like that. I think yeah. it's a. I think it's a. There's a couple. On there. I think it's a big boat for up there, like one. in Cape Cod too, like for stripers and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. because they got they need the bigger boats up there and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Sick boat. Did you use it? 
both ways you're thinking like oh I did, yeah yeah it was perfect it was like a stepping stone compared to what i have now which you know, that <laughs> thing can swim inside yeah right? absolutely so that was my boat when i decided i needed to make people catch fish gotcha gotcha and the clientele and yeah stuff like yeah so then so then i started fishing with kids you know because then i could take four people and instead of two or three you could do three on the hughes but it was a little tight, yeah. A little messy. Uncle Fuzzy, I think, has done it for years on his Hughes, but I think that Hughes is a little bit That's bigger. a good 24. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger, so almost the same size as your Jones. I don't know how he does it. I don't either. Well, that's Fuzzy, He's the right? man. That's Fuzzy, He's right? He's the man. His positive attitude tells people <laughs> to go up to the front. <laughs> so, you're out there, you're getting started, you're starting to get your name out there, you're happy where you're at. When do you, when do you start really focusing on tarpon? I mean, that's, that's probably your, would you say that's your favorite? Oh, yeah. And... Tell us what do you think about them? How'd you learn about them? You know what what you're doing with them now. I mean, just a little bit vague of it because I know it's such a you're one of the best, if not Thanks, the best buddy. around here, and you've won a lot of tournaments. And uh, it's pretty awesome to see what you do, and you're so in tune with it. So, what's your what'd you do to get out there, and how'd you get so good at it? I fished for them a whole lot, and I told people we're gonna catch the biggest fish. We didn't a lot of times, so. I had to have good customers that were ready to ready to fail with me. And yeah. I did a lot of it. But I would go to Florida, so my college roommate, Nick Fisher, Tarpon Fisher Charters down in Fort Myers, uh, we would go down every spring break. I uh, think we've only missed one year since 2004. Wow. Yeah, we've only missed one year because of COVID um, where we couldn't go stay with them. But, so we go down every year, and that's like right at the beginning of their big migration. The Boca Grande, he's all, a little south of that. Or, yeah, it's yeah. probably a 40 minute boat ride. Yeah, okay. You know, pegged. Yeah. 30 minutes maybe. So, I mean, there's just so many fish. I don't know why people do the keys when you can do that. Yeah. It's so, thousands? That, oh, dude. Yeah. Wow. I'm just seeing so a lot good. There. So good. I actually brought my Hughes down there um, last spring. And, uh, we went with him one day and went and caught permit off the reefs offshore. Wow. Which was like... Hard fish to catch, too. It was it? like going out to go catch a jack. He's like, you just throw this little crab. And, and that was <laughs> it? No, oh, it's, so, it's so unfair how good it is down there <laughs> for those guys. They work a lot harder than we do, though. They're like up getting bait in the dark. You know, we were like, all right, let's go get bait. They're right. like in the dark, all wet. And, yeah. Grass and why is that because they just can't they don't have a bait system like we have the water's or, clear the water's clear and that's why they're hiding out going to grab it basically yeah. yeah yeah they've got clear water and then they're getting them in the lights and behind the bridges oh and gosh they want to get it before everyone else gets it because they have so much competition so those boys work and what I'm happens sure. when you see that many fish is it shooting fish in a barrel or is it work too because those fish have been worked over yeah bit? It's the same as here. Great they'll, be, they'll be like all over the place, and you're like, you catch like a sharp nose. And like, and no, they don't have sharp nose. They have, uh, maybe they do, but you'll catch like a bonnet head or something. It's got to be even harder there because you see you see everything, which is a great visual. But yeah. when they don't want to bite, it's like, oh my gosh, what am I doing wrong, basically? It makes it's, it pretty much snub you, right? Yeah, it can be a little frustrating when there's just like, Thousands of <laughs> it's overwhelming. Like one rolls like over top of your line, over your like between you and the core. Please eat it. So I don't know, it's just awesome down there. So I learned a lot from those guys for sure. My grandparents and aunt and uncle lived down there on Sanibel, so stay with them or stay somewhere and bring a boat. That's awesome. But I was I forgot that. So we brought the cues down there, and there's this mega storm coming in and all the guide boats start leaving this big flat off of uh, North Captiva and uh, all of a sudden all the fish pop up and there's still maybe 10 boats around but those guys are all fishing it's interesting they fish out of the front of the boat everywhere is like six eight feet deep that they fish they power pole down and they all fish off the bow instead of us we anchor and fish off the right like, stern so I don't know if what I did was the right thing to do but I'm behind them you know you a ways from them but they're all staring at me and I'm just zipping around on all these positive tarpon on the trolling motor standing on the polling platform and uh, I think I had some bait I started with bait I, I chucked one in the pothole and got one and then jumped another in the pothole on bait but then when they're all swimming around I think I had pinfish they're like this big 
and uh, they wouldn't eat it no matter what. I dropped, you can see them? Oh, they're like from us to right here. God. You know, you'd flip it out there and the pinfish would swim down and see them and swim up and they might swipe it and move on. So I was like, well, if I'm going to get denied on that, I might as well build a fly. Get denied on that thing. That'd be fun. Right. And they started eating it. And uh, everyone's sitting there in the pothole, like, st I mean, they had to have been mean mug. I mean, I was far away, far enough away, I wouldn't have known. <laughs> right. But man, it was, that's just They awesome. just started chowing it, basically? For... Chowing. Huh. Like recently? Yeah, it was last spring. Oh, Can't wait awesome. to get back. What do you, what do you, what are you learning about that fish at that moment? I mean, besides the, is it intelligence? Is it instinct? Is it just the eyes see too much? What do you, what do you think that the reason they're not, because I mean, a perfect little anchovy bait it's like a little pizza bite you know i mean who doesn't like a pizza bite right yeah so why do you think they wouldn't eat the pinfish but your fly was a better pattern at that moment any reasoning sir you just luck of the odds or what i don't know they would seem like pretty mellow you know they were doing daisy chains right you know fins out the whole deal so they were so mellow i just made it extra easy for them to eat just it's small garbage fly. can them Moving real slow, no spikes, you know. Right. I wouldn't eat a pinfish. They eat them yeah, that's. Them. I mean, that is true. They it eat wasn't them very spiky. It only had one spike. It's a little spike. <laughs> a little, little spike. <laughs> so when you go to Florida and you come back here, what kind of techniques, you know, without not, you not giving too much away, what kind of stuff have you learned in Florida that you've brought back here that's made you successful? Or did you have to learn a whole different species of tarpon? And you got one clear water down there, obviously the same fish. And then we've got a little bit murkier water, but offshore yeah. a little bit. We see them and stuff. But what's the difference in, that you've learned and tactics that you brought there and you've created your own here, basically? Well, it's cool to learn both because our fish are, it's all muddy a lot of the time. And we get a lot of our bites on the bottom. A lot on top, too, but a lot on the bottom. And you're weeding out sharks and everything. Those guys hardly ever throw anything on the bottom. Everything's on the top. It's... Eight feet, eight feet so everything's, yeah, yeah. everything's on it's course. It's in mid yeah. right. And there's some, you know, channels and stuff. They'll fish on the bottom in like 20 feet, but they just don't have the current that we have. So it's been challenging to mimic their conditions, but every once in a while it happens. Like, say, slack tide, you start seeing fish roll, and you have to channel your inner cracker. I got it. You're That's awesome. A cracker and then try to figure out, all right, <laughs> what would those guys do down there? Why are it they? Works. They're, 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 we're always bringing techniques from Florida. It seems like every, there's so many different things. The tower, you know, you got a tower on your, both your boats actually. Um, what advantage does that have for not only, I know it's for the Jack or Val that are out there and other mm -hmm. things, but does that help you with tarpon too? I mean, can you, can you visual, does it help you with catching them, I guess I want to say? Like, do you really see them or is it more your, seeing them come up or going to certain areas that you know they're going to probably show up and then doing it on the bottom and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know if it helps me catch them as much. It helps me get in, in my groove, though. I was going to say, but it helps you get some alone time. <laughs> oh, man. It's like, imagine being in a beach chair, and then you just stick it way up in the air, and there's nothing like, you know, like on the boat, you've got like, say you've got your center console, you've got like the T-top, and then you've got eight rods right here and one of them got corked on like this and it's just it's hard to like Visualize. get in there and then you you know check out this blue deal. <laughs> <laughs> so dude it's like being in a whole different world so you can focus and like think about things and it's like something will remind you of something you're like oh i should check that out and just go like, you glance over toward wherever and be like oh that looks nicer and then, take a look. Yeah, take a so look. it just allows me the time to focus a little bit. But if I'm down there chatting or whatever, I'm... You're not paying attention I'm, to what's yeah, around you, basically. I yeah. got gotcha. you. And it's, you know, sometimes it's kind of impersonal. And people are, you know, you'll see people looking up like, when's this guy going to stop? Yeah, but one thing, I tell you, going? one thing I will say about you is, and it's pretty awesome, because that style of, you, you've never changed, I don't think. You've always been like, not so much get up on the tower, but you're... You're looking for different stuff. The three, basically the three D. That a lot of us look at the water. Whereas you get a client, they're looking at it one dimensionally. It's just a bunch of water. Where we've seen things, something catches your eye, whatever. The thing about you doing that is, man, you always back it up. I mean, for, not all the time it's fishing, but you always back it up with something extraordinarily big <laughs> or cool, or you definitely are going to get it done. Because a lot of times stuff doesn't set up 
until a certain time on a trip too. And we're, we're condensed into trips by times and when people can go and stuff like that. Um, what, do you, what, do you, what do you feel like the best thing to do in the morning is for you on a charter? Because this is interesting to me. Like, I've started to make it as easy as possible to get something on. Whereas what are you looking for? You, your people get on board. What are you going to do on a charter? What's your first thing you're going to oh, do? Oh, it's all or nothing with me. Yeah. Unfortunately. For That's the, awesome, yeah. For half of those folks, maybe not half. You tell them up front. Ah. <sighs> I think I break it to them gently, the plan, that there is no plan and that we're just going to go. And some people are like, all right. You know, they're really into it. And yeah. you've got like more of the numbers, statistics guy who probably like puts Excel <laughs> on his golf game and, yeah. you know, and they're like, what do you mean you don't know where we're going? I don't know. Yeah. That makes me happy to hear you say that because there's so many times I feel like such a jerk. Like, where are we going? Uh... Probably this way. I'm like, I don't right. know, I'm not here. You don't know. So you don't it makes, know. Me, makes me happy to hear you say that. Well, you're talking to a 12-year veteran, too. I mean, it's worked for you for 12 years in your business. It don't ever change a thing, right? That's just your style of fishing and stuff. What's your second favorite out there besides the tarpon? I mean, it's pretty tough because I know you're like the turkey hunters around here. Once they get into that turkey season, it's all they can think about once we get close to, what, June 1st is sometimes the first time a poon will come around. Um, a little bit later, but are you just all of a sudden you're just that's it? Or it's like a switch flip. Is it? Yeah. 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 It's crazy. I can't think of anything else. You're like, we gotta get anything to eat around here. I'm like, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we always come back to Hudson's. Yeah. And it's right about the time they guaranteed open. you're gonna be able to guaranteed. eat something there. Guaranteed. How about when you go after Spanish and stuff? I know you do that a little bit with yeah. the, with throwing the spoons, get people involved. And then also the Big Jack Ravels. I mean, oh, I do love the Big Jacks. The Big Jacks are a yeah. lot of fun and stuff for sure. Yeah. yeah. If you get out there early enough, it's gotten pretty popular lately. So yeah. you gotta be, you gotta be one of the first guys out there, and some of the, some of the older good older guys who are really good. He wants to the, the G. He wants to the G out there. What is it? The Guggen. The. <laughs> <laughs> some of the older dudes are so on point with their early game that they're like leaving. I don't even know what time they wake up. Uh, They're out. I mean, like they get there before you do? I think they get there before I wake up. I mean, you wake up early, I know, because we're exchanging Instagrams a lot of time at 5.30 in the morning. So I know you're up too. But yeah, I don't know. There's always somebody like, eh, like you're getting your boat ready and you just, eh, like, who's that guy? Yeah. Is there, where is he going? Man? I had to tell their clients, you know, to get there that early. People struggle with seven. But I guess if you're going hunting with someone who's, always producing or something or fishing you get, that guy says six you go at six i don't know uh, yeah you just gotta go i mean you're excited i think the, the client's excited anyway the night before it's i'm excited when you get up not all not <laughs> after like a two on a trip but you're you're ready to go and once you get there you're in but you're right there is always a guy that just there's that guy he's out there and he's How gone he do it? i don't know dude he's just up at three just hanging out basically dude, I, I know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> and he gets there before you Although you leave pretty early, you're a little pirate out there. You'll you'll get to the spots way. Before. You'll be at a spot and gone by the time half the fleet gets there. That's what I love about you. Kind of got that pirate mentality. <laughs> you never see them all. You and Greg Clark are, are like that. I noticed that the South End very similar. Like you just never see it. I never see it <laughs> on the water. I never see Greg. Greg, I one time I did. I saw him like using the backdrop. I think allegedly he was doing this using the backdrop of the Fusky. And then disappeared into the mist, you know, like Captain Jack, basically. All right, well, let's, you kind of touched on some stuff. You touched on people, the tarpon. <clears throat> let's have it from your perspective. I know you didn't grow up here, but from six years old, you're pretty much a local. And now that you've been in the business a long time, where, where is our fishery? What's your opinion on it? And where do we need to be? It's a big question. And I know you're a, pretty much a non-kill kind of guy, mm -hmm. which is awesome. I, I totally agree. Um, what what do you think the fishery looks like right now? Well, bait's been good the last few years. It has. It's come back because we had a couple bad years. When you have the bad bait years, you start to really worry. Sure. Of course, I think the redfish fishery is pretty poor right now. It's gotten kind of worse each year. Uh, Why do you think, though? I, I first mean, noticed it when gas went up. Ah, I'm trying to think what year this was. When the gas went up significantly for the first time in my life where I like really noticed it 
I think a lot of the offshore get a box of fish guys started being like, oh, I can't. Oh. I'm not going to go run around out there all the time. So mm -hmm. I think that's when it started. And then red fishing got really popular and really accessible. Of course, the internet <laughs> made everything so accessible. So there didn't used to be as many people doing it. Um, Which I think is a give and take. And I was thinking about this. I knew we were going to talk about this tonight. It's, oh, man. I know, I know we want to keep stuff for ourselves, but also the amount of people that are seeing videos, YouTube, social media, which we all make it look like we just go out and kill it every day because that's what we're doing. And some are doing that. And we want more people involved, but are we just not sending the right message? Is that why we're having so much pressure on our fish, at least here? Does that make sense? I think we're sending the, the message that we're crushing it every day. Yeah. No one's ever like, oh, man. <laughs> yep. Like throwing a banana out there and be like, yeah. Yeah. Like, well. yeah. like, oh, he didn't post for three days, but then, wow, look at that trophy you just rocked out of the house that one. I get it. I, get I think it. we make it look like there's, t like, we have tons of fish, and everyone's like, well, there's tons of them. What's, what's three of them mm -hmm. going to put it dead? i tell you who does that, Trent Malfress. I always like his posts. Oh, oh it makes me had to work yeah. for him. Yeah. Yeah. I love He's that. He's supposed yeah. to come on next Friday with us, and we're going to sit down with him. And the first thing I want to say to him is, like, man, can you just stop? Because every time I don't have a good day and I look at his feed, it looks like there's trillions of redfish out there. I mean, <laughs> he's just killing it, dude. And, you know, even the question asked to you, Besides your tarpon fishing expertise, we'll call it, you're an inshore fishy guy. I mean, you know exactly where a lot of reds are, a lot of schools, and also you know the technical aspect of where they're going to be, why they're there, when they're going to bite, when they're not. So coming from you, are you sounding the alarm? or And what are our solutions to it instead of just, you know, oh, let's watch it go down and down and down. What can we do to improve it, basically? All of us as captains, too. I think we just need to let them all go. And then sometimes you're catching a lot of them, like a lot. You'll get on a spot, One after wearing another. it out. But yep. they don't all live. We have to keep in mind they mm -hmm. don't all live. You can release them and they look great. But when it comes to percentage, I don't know what percentage no, is, I know. but they don't all live. So ride around in the boat, go get a few here, go get a few here, a few here. But if you sit there and catch, you know, I remember when I was well, how do you first know, getting into How do you know they don't, of all of them, survive? I mean, just is that from expert, from being out there experience or you saw? I mean, how do you know that? You know, when you fish, like in the wintertime, every once in a while, you'll like, you'll be in the flats, you'll be like, I'm pretty sure that's an upside down fish. Ooh, I Like gotcha. you can see them. I gotcha. They don't always like, <clears throat> like you know, it's not like dead fish. In the summer, they float up, up but, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like in the summer, the little ones will see them. And when it's real hot, you yeah. know? real hot you'll see a plate in so they basically stress themselves out basically when you're catching them and stuff like that yeah gotcha or maybe they're hooked Down. hooked bad but they're not bleeding right and then you're like well maybe i should Could what is that what yeah what is the best procedure i mean that's a good catch one. a few move on catch a few but i mean what if you've got hook one i mean we try to get it as best we can but sometimes those reds i mean they're like bluegills on a j hook they eat it so quick that is it worth digging it out because we got to release it Yep. If it's a short or even a large, right, just by law. Yep. What, do, what do we do to best handle a redfish if we do catch one? Besides, catch a couple here. I like that. Catch a yeah, couple here. Smash your move, catch ball. a couple here. Move around. I like that. Yep. But yep. what do we don't do with those enough. fish that we're in trouble? We hate it. I hate it. When yeah. It happens, you're like, oh, any fish, basically. Yeah. If they come up bleeding, I usually just cut it as close to the knot as I can and and give them hope the, for the best. Right. Maybe it's a legal fish. Yeah. And if it's bleeding real bad, then you're like, well, well harvest it. You know, yep. harvest it. And like I said, we go out of Hudson's so they can whip it up, make tacos. And yeah, it doesn't go to it doesn't go to waste. Yeah, I don't it, I don't like to let it go to waste. But you can either snip it right there. You know, don't hold it vertical by the line. Right. Know, yeah. Dig it on it. Hold but it. you can also go through that through the first gill. I'm trying to think if it's the first one in the front or the first one in the back. One where it doesn't touch the gills, basically. You right? can sneak in there and loop it around, like with the circle. Yep. You can Take pop it, it back out without like a bunch of. Because if you do it from inside the mouth, then you're like pulling the. Pulling all the so rocks and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, have you tried it? Uh -oh. Yeah. I've never even thought to do that. I always just cut it. 
Yeah, I mean, it could be maybe, terrible. Maybe, maybe sometime, to maybe well, sometime we'll, we'll get one, and if it happens, maybe we shoot a video to show people. Every fish counts, and I know yeah. it sounds. I, I think the biggest thing with having you two is education. I feel your vibe. We all do. Um, sometimes I wonder if I'm just a bad fisherman, which I could be, and I'm just not catching anything. But I think we've all talked about it a little bit. How about bull reds? How about other fish? I Even mean, we're going to go bull red, and then we're going to go tarpon. So what do you think about? Our bull reds. Well, I mean, our bull red fishery is very healthy. How yeah. should we handle a bull red? That's, let's talk about handling fish out there the best, so they best have the best chance to survive. Oh, man. That's where we're messing up, for sure, okay. with the bull reds. Because those are the ones, you know, the females are doing, what, each year 250,000 eggs? It's, it's our future right, right? there. Yeah. So, and that's because... How many? 250,000, Is that what it is? I'll look it up, but that's... Okay. Well, it should be like half of that. Let's <laughs> go like 200. No, yeah, 50 numbers, <laughs> no yeah. I, I, I will look it up. We'll check a, it out. It's a lot. Yeah, fantastic. So, there's so many people that are like, all right, and toss it. Now, I'm not saying to sit there and do the... Revive. The revive deal. Uh, one of the scientists that does a lot of the tagging, he recommends the... The bullet. The torpedo yeah. the bullet. And there's nothing more satisfying. Than oh, that. yeah. And seeing the bubbles, and that, of course the fish not float up, but there's a lot of times you'll be fishing in an area, say there's a boat over there and a boat over there, wherever, Harbortown, Rip, Redville, wherever boats congregate, and you'll see one floating, and you're like, whose fish is that? What? You know, you got to go turn those babies over real fast. Yeah. I have thumped them. And week. nothing's worse than doing, to watch one after you've had these, I, I hold them in a high... There's certain fish you hold a higher regard to, and that's one of them. And I've had it happen to me. I'm going to admit it because I wasn't educated enough. The thing you release it, everybody's high fiving, you know, pictures, and all of a sudden, big white belly in the back there, and you're anchored up. I'll pull the anchor. I don't Tide care. Tide screen. There. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times they'll go, they'll take them a little bit to get back, but it can't be very healthy for the stress of the fish. Sometimes you can hit them with a weight, even though they're good at And then they'll knock them out. Yeah, absolutely. But that's still stress on an animal, basically. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but we don't need to catch 30 of them. You know, sometimes you get on that same bite where you're like, you what know, I, you got doubles, and then you got three on all of a sudden, and everyone's going nuts, and it's hard. It's, not oh, to, it's hard. It's hard not to keep going. You're like, oh, it's the best. People are like, this is the best. It is, but how ever. many can you, I mean, how many of those? How many I've do you need? On, I've, I've been on a boat where uh, 32 in a two hour period. And I was exhausted just taking them off a hook and wrestling with those yeah. things. So I mean, and the last time I was just out, I think we were up to seven and I was like, let's go do something else. I mean, yeah. and the, the, I think the fifth and the seventh, fifth to the seventh one were kind of accidents because there were so many of that winter, you know, where you find the birds out in the ocean uh, and stuff. It's and it's cool. pretty, and it's awesome, yeah. That's but how many cool. can you, you're right, how many can you catch basically? How many do you need? Let me ask you this. So you're saying things that I think everyone thinks. I know, I'm thinking about it. It's all we complain about at the dock. But it's so hard to tell someone, like, hey, fight's too good. We got to, what is your approach? What, what do you think, like, to throw stuff back? Feel like, is that good to eat? Like, eh, could be. You know, like, or I'll be like, I don't need it. Right. You know, I'm trying to paint that picture. What are your punchlines? Like, I love, I love that energy and stuff. And like you talked about, it's not sitting there and mugging them. How do you tell people, well, found the trophy, he's got to roll. Like, how do you, how do you <laughs> tell them that, you know? <laughs> don't get any better than this. You already told yeah, them. Yeah. Go. Let's Hurry go. Up, pop one. Wrap it up. Wrap yeah. it up. What, yeah. are, what are you telling your people? Oh, Because I'm going to, I'm going to steal your lines, man, because I love it. Well, and yeah. I think you should lead the way here because you're, you're doing it right out there where, at least for our fishery, and since we're all sitting around, most of us saying we got to do something here, and we're seeing practices out there, maybe some of the stuff that even I'm guilty of too. Uh, tell, tell us how you do that. Yeah, how do we I educate gotta... people on our trips and so they still have a great time? Or even we go out with our buddies. How do we manage this fishery from our perspective? Yeah, you just have to chat the whole time. But, oh, isn't this great? You see that? You have to get people involved and be like, man, these fish are awesome you're like i'll tell you what try to let's release it like this or let me get a picture of you holding it in the water instead of up like this and then they get all into it and they make make for cool pictures. i'm sitting terrible at pictures but um you just talk to them the whole way and then be like all right did everyone catch one you got one right all right let's i take four people some you know yeah at most 
Um, so if you catch four, maybe a, maybe a fifth one pops on there, but instead of going, trying to beat that run, school yeah, up, basically, yep. You know, just say, oh man, all right, let's leave these fish alone so we can catch them next year and things like that. So you edu just are you educating people to yeah. besides chirping? And you're also putting your heart into it. I think that's a big one because mm -hmm. when you talk about it, it's you show you care for sure. You show you care and you care right. about the fish too. I mean, it's hard, you know, like to educate, but you can keep doing it. If they feel like you're into it, they're probably more likely going to be into it. Right. Or you've, or you've, I, w I wish we could just get the message out and look at, I'm, we're not Lake Erie, uh, we're not Alaska, we're not Florida, uh, you know, Yellowtail, these have walleye, these stuff. I just wish that we could change into that. I wish that mindset could go away that I've got to go catch something when I go to fish. I, I get the laws and I'm good with that. I'm like you. I wouldn't want to kill anything. I just, I want it to be there for generations. But somehow it's such a drive to catch them. Isn't that kind of like a tarpon? Talk about how sensitive those are. I mean, these are massive, violent fish, but when you catch them and you fight, fight them, how long should you fight a tarpon? Educate everybody, though. Because after a while, you're doing more damage than you are. Yeah, if you don't that. have that baby in 20 minutes. That's a 20. You're sucking. Wow. And maybe it's deep, though. I had one roll me in. I think it was at Shorty. And we hooked it. And it was like, it was already October. And I'd kind of written off the whole tarpon game. I hadn't seen fish for a week, of course. This was long, this was on the Jones Brothers, the first one. Gotcha. And uh, I put my little full red combo. It was like a 30-pound medium heavy deal. Uh, of course, the biggest one of, to date that we've ever caught really? came on that thing. <laughs> and it pulled us into the shark hole. You know, it gets kind of like 70 yep. feet in there. Because yep. the tide was coming in. Pulled us into the shark hole. Like, you know, 30 pound line. The guy's fighting it straight over top of the fish. And I wish I wouldn't have let it go on as long. I want to say the guy fought it for an hour and a half. Oof. And by then, <laughs> Yeah, there's no telling if that thing survived. This was before I knew any better. Yeah, no, I absolutely. even saw a picture of me holding one out of the water with a guy, and we looked so happy. But I got, I got to have that scrub. Well, <laughs> it's a, it's education. Can't do that, I know? mean, look at the guys that back in the uh, '60s, '70s, and I think all the way up to the '90s, where they were hooking them with a gaff, gaff, you know, to bring yeah. them. In. Just, I guess, we just didn't know, or just not enough education with it. Um, so how, how do you handle a tarpon? 20 minutes or less? Just a good lesson to people. Yeah. yeah. Put the drag down and just honk them like a tow truck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what's what's fun about any more than 20 minutes? It is yeah. a man on a big fish, for yeah. sure. Yeah. It's not like it's nice weather. No, you're sweating, yeah. dude. Yeah. It's a, it's, we fought one way too long one time, too. And I thought they told me that a fish that's over 100 pounds could be anywhere up to 80 to 100 years old. Is that correct? Some of these... That's what one of the biologists said down in Miami. So you're dealing with like your, and most of the time these fish are not bigger than me, maybe you. These are some monsters out there that kind of deserve a lot of respect. And oh, yeah. What do you think? Once you, I mean, once you hook them that good, is it, is it time to like put the, the hammer down? Because you know you're probably not going to lose that hook at that point. Because we talk about, I guess we haven't talked about how hard it is to hook a tarpon just in general. Mm -hmm. We're talking about catching them like we run out there just, <laughs> hey what's up we got another one but just the, just to jump one or see one out there is almost makes a captain's day when yeah, yeah that's the best part absolutely yeah, that's absolutely the best part. Jump is the best. yeah just well, what was it oh, oh I just, <laughs> that's the best so once you get them hooked is that when you really or immediately you're just putting the hammer down on them no i let them do their thing right at first i got gotcha. you they're going nuts i want them to do their dance do yeah. the dance put on the show hopefully Burn not off. hopefully they shake off, but if they shake off, great. If not, right. catch them. But it's when they get, you know, it'll go to over there, and then it'll pretty much swim right back at you. Once it's swimming back at you, that's it. Crump her down and bring her in. Very cool. So you grab, I mean, I don't know if this is graduating, but uh, so it'll change gears a little bit. Cause well, I got to tell you about the guy that passed out with the tarpon. Come on, dude. That's why we're here. What are you waiting on? <laughs> oh, it started with that. Yeah. <laughs> So you're talking about it not you're talking about it being hot out. So I had this this trip we were in Chichesi and it just goes buttered out. There's oh, yeah. a couple wow. of boats out, it's super hot. <laughs> and I'm in the tower and he's fighting it. And I wanna say it was a pretty small rig. Full bay, uh 
real animals rod. It's like a 15 to 30. And uh, it was a pretty good sized fish. Actually, Andrew Roberson filmed it and I saw saw the video the other day. So oh, no kidding. Okay. That's awesome. So he's fighting it and fighting it and he's like, I don't think I'm doing so good. And I'm like, you know, people doubt themselves. So I always try to encourage her. Like, You're doing great. You're doing great. And he's like, no, I'm not doing good. Up this guy. And, uh, well, how old is he? Young? Old? Yeah, no, he's pretty young. His kids are the same age as mine. He might be middle 40s, okay. late right, 40s. So, yeah. Maybe he's 50. Awesome guy. He's hired me every year since <laughs> I almost killed him for you. Yeah. <laughs> so he's, saying, he's like, I'm not doing so good. And then the way he said it the next time, he like slurred his words. And I'm like, what oh. in the world? So he's like, I need you to take this. So I hopped down from the tower. It's just awesome being up there, you know, sometimes you turn the, oh, I should mention, I don't usually throw the hook and chase the fish. I catch them much quicker. I keep it on anchor. Tell the story. We'll talk about that in a minute because that's important. Okay. Because you're probably, what you're saying is when you chase them down, it's just going to take longer. Oh, they're, they're just swimming. swimming they're just swimming away. Yeah. yeah. Which, yeah, go ahead. So he's passing that, or not passed that. So, yet. yeah, he's like <laughs> kind of falling into the gunnel and jumbling up his words on up with this guy and I grabbed the rod and he's woo, 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 woo. he's like woo, ah! he's gagging and trying to say something and no one can understand what he's saying and uh, so I'm holding the rod and this fish is, woo, 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 woo. and I'm like oh my gosh I need to get this guy like back right Spam. now yeah and it jumps again I'm like never like uh. broken one off on but I'm looking at him and I'm looking at the rod and it's like Regardless, you got to get them iced down. So I have them laid down. It happened, the boat happened to be facing, so the shade was over the front. So I'm like, lay them down right here. And then we got all the towels on the boat in the cooler. He has heat stroke, basically. Yeah, yeah. So we got them around the oh, neck, geez. on his head, on his chest. And I'm still holding it. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. I don't know what to do. Obviously, you take them in. You just yeah. pop and take them. I, for, I had this to weak, well, I could not do it. Did you pop them in? I kept, I, well... No, the tide was coming in, and we kept it up further up, and I'm like checking on him, I'm like just reeling in a little bit, and his family's like helping him and stuff, and we ended, I ended up catching the fish. <laughs> That's so, awesome. So the video is me on the bow with the fish right next to us, and then I, I zipped him in after that. <laughs> just couldn't that. do it. I, I could not do it, and I feel terrible about it. I guess I don't feel that bad, because like, if I'm saying it out loud. Right. First it place, right. best story we've heard yet. <laughs> That's not, a, you take the cake. It is not the right move. Uh, <laughs> just that, just kind of <laughs> insurance is going to drop me when they hear this. <laughs> oh my god! So, <laughs> but he turned out to be all right, and he's come back every he's, year. He's back, so right? So there you go. Another uh, happy customer. <laughs> I've had people pass out for not drinking and afraid to to use the bathroom. Like, trust me, you're not going to have to use the bathroom. It's 130 out here. Like, just drink. Right. Drink. And then, I, mean, I, could, I had a lady do that with a stingray, which is not as epic, but same thing after. She's like, oh, I don't feel good, but that's that's the best. That tastes the cake. Well, I mean, uh, two out there just, man, I guess we just go out there and it's like, it's 100 today. Like, yeah, I know. Let's just go. <laughs> like, oh, I think there's a little breeze and if there's not, you're still going to. But most of these people are not geared towards no. this type of environment. And then, to put them on 100 pound tarpon, I mean, or a big shark or whatever. There's big stuff, big stingrays. I mean, yeah. I've seen people, whole families fight stingrays basically. So why don't you, so why tell the folks why you wouldn't chase them versus staying on the hook, meaning the anchor, why you stay on the anchor and fight them? I've noticed that when I throw the ball and go and start chasing them down, they seem to just do a, a nice lazy NASCAR loop around you and you're turning the boat and you're not really pulling on the fish. But if you stay on the hook, I mean, that's a 15 minute fish max. If you stay on the hook, you can, he's going this way, you pull this way with your hand on, on the spool and whatnot. Oh, you're pulling them the whole time? A lot of the time. That's how you get a lot of pressure going out the other way, don't you? Yeah. When, when, so when they give you some too. give, I take, yeah. So. I thought, yeah, when you chase them, it just takes forever. Plus, Unless I think you're I'm, just trying to do the leader deal, like the guys in Florida doing the tournaments. Nothing's better than throwing the ball in the chase just to show everybody, I'm chasing something. But the, when you chase too, I think a lot of times, whether it's a big shark or tarpon or whatever, they love to get in your prop wash. And I swear to God, it's like probably putting an oxygen mask 
I didn't even think of that. They're just oh. sitting there. You're reviving them to go fight more, basically, because they get in that, they, you know, they feel good. It's just that current, basically. So that's crazy. Um, switching gears, so you went to become an owner. Now you had two boats running, two incredible boats. What was it like? I mean, you're still on the water, too, daily and doing your thing. What was it like to become not only a captain, then now you're an owner with another responsibility, and you're growing your company, which is great. But with that comes probably a different look at things. Would you agree? It was very overwhelming. <laughs> when did you decide to do that? Uh, all right, well, I, it happened at the skate park. Okay. <laughs> it all started what at the skate, the skate park. happens at the skate park stays at the skate yeah. park. Yeah. So there's a reason why there's not a bunch of people my age at the skate park all the time. Huh. And I found that out. So... <laughs> I was supposed to go meet Dylan up at the skate park for fun. We had we had met a while back and talked about skateboarding or something. And I'm like, hey man, I'm rolling up at the park, you want to go? And he always couldn't go or whatnot. And one day he's like, oh man, yeah, I'm coming. And I get there, I've got, I think I had both my kids with me. And we're skating around. This is uh, right at the first year of COVID in the spring. Okay. So usually like I'll skateboard all through the winter. And then I'll start toning it down, right. a little more conservative through February and March. And then, I don't, know, I don't know why my wife didn't just take this dang thing away. <laughs> but I try to put it away and I'll just, you know, right. around the driveway, you know, up and down the road. Easy, or whatnot, easy. But, you know, not the bowl at the Bluffton Park, the eight-foot right. eight bowl at the Bluffton Park, which we love. So I just take this big old digger and I hurt my shoulder pretty good. Like I, Did you feel it? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It was like, it made all this crunching, uh, and my arm came up all kind of sideways yeah. and, and whatnot, and oh. had to do the whole deal. It's actually kind of like still drooped over. And I went to the, to the, what's the guy, urgent care guy. I was like, he's showing me the x-ray. He's like, see this thing? It's supposed to be up here. I was like, oh, okay, how do I fix that? He's like, you don't. It's just going to be like that. And I'm like, all cool. right. Cool. He's like, so uh, I guess I'll see you later. I'm like, okay. <laughs> So it's not that. <laughs> so, yeah. So you tell me there's a chance. <laughs> yeah. So, so I called Dylan. I'm like, hey man, I got, I got a cruise. My kids are like, why are we leaving? I'm like, just carry my board, please. <laughs> you're driving. Yours too. Yeah, you're driving. So I couldn't really like, dude. I couldn't do anything for what for months. I remember when you. Yeah. Yeah. For months. You helped me out a lot. Yeah, you, you were catching bait for yeah, me. Yeah. Felt bad for you. Even though, well, seriously, I mean. It, that's part of your job, right? It's not that great when you, you got yeah. one troop. I couldn't even get up to get to the <laughs> throttle, dude. No. And I was like, Dylan, you want to run some trips? Because was, he was already on the phone. And he's like, yeah, I'll run some trips. And that's where it all started. Captain Dylan, who's a fantastic yes. fisherman. And great captain. Absolutely. Good dude. And then he just took over for you. So then he, he kind of <clears> put the bug in my ear about running a boat. I'm like, I'm not going to get another boat. I don't have any money. I'm a fisherman. <laughs> right. Oh no, we make lots of money. And then the COVID loans came out. Yeah. So that's how it all started. But it was it was overwhelming, the amount of things that broke, in one season. It was like the longest list of things that I've ever broken in my life. Were you already in that mind? I mean, we're all in mindset when you're going to buy a boat, or you're starting a company in your back of your mind. Like, worst case scenario is somewhere back there. It was worse than that, like the stuff that happened, or. Was it stuff you kind of expected, kind of too? A little bit of both. A little bit little of both. Bit of both. Yeah. So I have a lot of respect for people that have have their show going on with all those moving pieces. Yeah. I didn't realize. Yeah. What it was. I'm glad I did it and I enjoy it. But a lot of respect for those guys, especially the ones with a bunch of boats. Oh yeah, yeah. And you're and there is a lot to it. I mean, everybody thinks, oh, it's just great. You hop in a boat and you go. And behind the scenes, I mean, there's so many little different things and. It's not even just the charter boat guys, fishing guys, but it's also the dolphin guys and the ski guys. And tour. Any, any type of tour you have on the island, you deal with boats, you're going to have massive breakdowns. That's you have water breaks massive day. scheduling problems, somebody, you know, this or whatever. So you've got through that, and now you've had this uh, two boats now, what, two, three years now? Yeah, it's the third season. And the boat, you, uh, you started with the Jones Brother 20, then you got the 20. Three mm -hmm. Jonesy, mm -hmm. and then what would you get down in Florida? Because that's a rogue. The reason I wanted that because you pretty much also became MacGyver, and you pretty much 
I watched it happen. You did some like meticulous stuff on that boat, mm -hmm. uh, the second tower and all that stuff. And I guess you can't do that unless you have somebody else running and stuff. But were you mechanically like that before, or did you get thrown into it like? Well, I set up I set up the Jones brothers, um, a good bit of it. So I kind of had an idea of what should go where. You know, I could I could just go over there and like look at it. Like, oh, like, three hoses come off that thing. Yeah. Go to this. So. And of course, Kirk Sutliff, he's the man. He's, you know. Black dog. Call the man on the phone and he, don't call him. Don't call him. <laughs> don't call his phone. Call, call the office. There you go. But every once in a while, he would answer my call if I called his phone. And gotcha. Tell him, you know, he doesn't want to deal with my stuff right then and there. So sometimes that would help me. That's nice. That point friend me friend. in the right direction a lot of times. So Absolutely. He's a good dude. So. Uh, we'll wrap this up with a couple different things. Um, one, you've been married how long? Yeah, that'll get you in trouble. God bless her for sticking with you. Yeah, Obviously. no doubt. You got two amazing kids. Is your son Finn, you think he's got this bug too? Or is he just learning stuff right now? He's so young, he's just seeing everything for the first time. I picture him as more of like a field biologist. Nice. He uh, he just wants to capture things. He's he got your He don't want to hurt them. Right. He doesn't want to go fishing all day for the same thing. Like, it's cast net time when he's on the boat. He's like... You know, that rogue has got uh, the two little wells in the back, and then it's got the big the big well, and he's like, this is my live well. Y'all don't mess with it. That's super cool. So, he's, you know, we're catching all kinds of wild stuff, especially when you're shrimping. You know, you get your squids. Croakers, all that kind croakers. of stuff. Croakers. We brought a lot of it home for a tank, and it was like wow. gladiators in the tank. We had to, we had to, <laughs> we had to scrap it. There was a lot of stuff. Well, Symbiosis <laughs> in the tank world that we didn't research up on. The strongest survives basically, and they're basically one lap. Um, and then you got your you got a passion for snakes, which is pretty cool. I've seen some of your pythons, right? On mm -hmm. um, the different colors and stuff. And so your kids are basically growing up with that, so they're not really too afraid of anything. Basically, that's kind of the way you've taught them and stuff, which mm -hmm. is pretty pretty awesome. Um, to finish up, how many tournaments did you win? Tournaments, uh, tarpon tournaments so far. Four or five, I think. A lot, we'll just say that. And you're also sponsored by Marshmallow, is that correct? I don't know if I am or not. Well, they you, just helped me you out. You've been allegiance act, to it. They, they, uh, they actually made this shirt custom for me, so you got the hot pink. Uh huh. Yeah. Those, I like colors. Yeah. And then they got this deal. Oh, that's sweet, dude. Look at that, dude. You got the girl. That's uh, x ray. Hang baby. on. Wait a minute, turn around again. Yeah. All right. We show that. We're going to show that shirt. Okay, good. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. First cowgirl in the mullet, and she's holding a lure called a coon pop, which is a... Okay, there we go. <laughs> originates. <laughs> All right. Finish it up. Give uh, <laughs> give the folks out there, whether it's the charboat captains or the general public, give them one tip about fishing that is going to make their day better out there. It could be a random one, whatever it is. What can you think of to make their day better out on these waters here? Go check out that spot you were thinking about. <laughs> It's a good one. Cause Especially if you've never been there. Go do that. That's the one good Yeah. Too. How many times do you do that? I mean, still, are you still checking out spots? I mean, oh, you know, yeah. There's never going to be enough time to check them all out. Is right. There? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Got to go explore. Yeah. Get it fresh. Yeah. It's, don't just go to the easy spots or it's, there'll be no fish left at all the easy spots because we know them. Well, you'll get bored after a while. That's a good mm -hmm. point. Yeah. Challenge, get bored. Challenge, challenge yourself. If you're bored out there, then you're not challenging yourself enough. Awesome. Well, man, thank you for coming in. Yee. I love you, and congratulations on all your success. I think more people need to, to know that about you. It's not just your fishing style and what you've caught. Um, it's just, you know, the way you're doing it out there, and I think more of us need to take a look at that type of conservation because we want Finn to be able to catch a ton of stuff in his cast net for years. <laughs> no, I mean that. The kids, basically, and then in the future. And stuff. Absolutely. All right. Anything to add? Just oh, looking good. good over there, always. All right, thanks, guys. Hey, one thing Paul wanted me to say, like and subscribe. I can't believe I'm saying it. Say it. Like and subscribe. What are you going to do? Yeah, he's a mute. Like and subscribe. <laughs> we out. Thanks, buddy.